AMD is getting high. Apple decides to just slap everybody and be like, we're the dominant PC tech master now. And Linux is bad and vulnerable and oopsie doodles. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. But first, a message from Robo Brett to remind you that my flesh self is streaming meme review over on Twitch right as this video goes live at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So go watch your favorite fleshlings at twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. So we're going to start off today talking about the thing that I've been waiting for for a little bit, at least everybody wants it. It's the X3D chips from AMD. And now new reports coming out with not only the release date, but also the pricing of the chips that we talked about in previous episodes of Hot News. So it looks like they will be launching it on 420. Yes, my friends, AMD going high, but not just with the date, but also the pricing on the X3D. I actually want to hear your opinions about this down below in the comments, but the 5800 X3D is now being reported to come in at a price of $449, which is the exact same price as the 5800X, which honestly isn't a problem, except for the fact that according to AMD's own benchmarks, the 5800 X3D should be beating the 5900X and the 5950X in gaming setup so does this mean that you don't buy a higher cpu unless you really really need the core counts as a kind of obsolete amd's own higher end chips and where is the 5900 x3d that everybody kind of already was expecting from amd it's hard to say but we also have some pricing on the lower end chips as well the 5700x being reported to come in at 299 the 5600 at 199 and the 5500 coming in at 159 but also additionally we likely will get lower and chips based on Zen 2 performance with the 4600G coming in at 154, the 4500 coming in at 129, and then the Ryzen 3 4100 coming in at only $99, which just honestly kind of shows to me that AMD is continuing to not take the low end market segment seriously until always year on year releasing lower end products. AMD just not choosing to do that right now, likely because it is a lower margin item. And at the current moment, they're trying to fight off two juggernauts in Intel and Nvidia, so not shipping out the low margin products probably is better for their profit margins, their ability to spend money on R&D, but it is a little bit disappointing as somebody who wants to find value orientation in his consumer products. But let me know what you think of this launch down below in the comments, but also we're getting reports that the XT refresh, the 69 X50 refresh, the 60 X50 refresh, that's gonna give us the 6950, 6850, all of those will be taking place roughly at the same time. So AMD launching that rocket up high, staying high for 420 on all of that with those GPUs and CPUs launching. But nobody's higher than Apple right now. We made a video about this over on UFD Tech. It's kind of a shit post, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I could have a lifetime supply of onion salt. But Apple had their peak performance event yesterday and they came out with a ton of performance, specifically in their M1 Ultra chip, which confirms previous reports that were out there about the fact that the M1 Max chips that Apple had released could be fused together. And as you can see here, they indeed could be fused together and that is exactly what the M1 Ultra is. It's two M1 Max chips put together. It has tons of optimizations because of that, 2.5 terabytes per second of low latency interprocessor bandwidth, which is a huge amount for an interconnect technology, as well as the fact that it's gonna have 20 core CPU, 16 high performance cores, four efficiency cores, 90% higher multi-threaded performance, as well as using 100 fewer watts than other PCs. And then the GPUs are also fused together, the M1 Ultra having up to 64 cores on the GPU, which is eight times the size of the base M1, and it's gonna be as fast as the highest end PC while drawing 200 fewer watts of power. And then they're also scaling up the memory mount, which can go up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. And then they also have a 32 core neural engine that's gonna be able to do a ton of stuff, like freaking 18 streams of 8K ProRes 422 video, which is just, at, if, you, if you've ever tried to stream even freaking 4K video, just see 18 streams, gosh dang, this is a good processor. And it's gonna be packed into the new Mac Studio. It's essentially a Mac mini on steroids being beefed up, I mean, maybe not steroids, but like getting the Gattaca elongation to its body so that it could just be a little bit taller. As you can see here, it's got Thunderbolt ports on the front with an SD card reader, tons of Thunderbolt ports and USB ports on the back with Ethernet and HDMI. This thing does look to be a powerhouse. It's even got a fan to keep it cool. It's going to start at $19.99 for the M1 Max chip, not the M1 Ultra. If you want the M1 Ultra, you have to go up to $399.99 and then the maxed out version with eight terabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of memory is going to
gonna cost you a cool $79.99, which is more specifically what yesterday's UFD Tick video was about, so you can check that out right up there. But also, Apple announcing their 27-inch 5K Studio, which is supposed to go for the Mac Studio. This is a stupid, stupid, this, this seems to be a really weird launch by Apple as far as the display. It's gonna be at $15.99 for the price. It can come with or without a stand. Thankfully, it's not a thousand dollar stand like we've seen from Apple previously. But the spec list is kind of a little uninspiring, especially at the price point of $1,600. 5K, that's fine. 600 nits brightness, P3 color gamut, Apple's true tone. But like, if you look at Apple's like product page of what they're trying to show off, it has has an A13 Bionic processor, so that's neat. It has USB-C ports, but they put one billion colors. Like, how how limited is your marketing on this monitor that you have to talk about how many colors it has? Like, I'm I'm all for if you're trying to tell us what the color gamut is, but you already told us that it has P3 wide color, so you're just you're just being redundant. It just it seems a little weird, especially considering the fact that we're getting really close to QD OLED displays that are coming out. And in fact, Display Ninja yesterday releasing the first review of one of these such displays, and it has spec lists that absolutely trump what Apple's got going on with their studio display. 14. 40p ultra wide, but a thousand nits brightness, not 600. It also covers the DCI-P3 color gamut. And then it also has OLED like features. And this is just the first QD OLED that's coming out as we see more and more of that popping up. Apple's new monitor just seems rather uninspired and kind of too little too late. It's just like an iMac, the bigger iMac panel that they're gonna be shipping out. It's not worth it if you have ever purchased a good panel within the last two or three years. But Apple's also discontinuing their 27 inch iMac. They also announced a few other things like the iPad Air is going to get the M1 chip. There's going to be a new green color for the iPhone 13 and nobody really cares about anything else. It's really the M1 Ultra chip, but it's actually really freaking good and it probably will uh, make it so that a lot of people are going to have to end up switching to Apple in order to do productivity moving forward because it seems like Apple's the only one who's like supremely innovating in this space. AMD, Intel, they're giving us good CPUs. They're giving us things that are, are you know, improving year over year. 15% great. Apple's kind of been the only like monumental leap that we've seen recently. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. And I'm excited to tell you about UFD deals, the hottest tech deals on the internet. Reese is updating the deals as often as he can. Reese, give us more deals. But he's giving us the deals on the Sony WH-1000XM4 for only $278 right now. That is 21% off. I picked these bad boys up the last time they went on sale and I absolutely love them. In case you want a 240 hertz gaming monitor, Dell has theirs for $209.99, which is 32% off. If you want a microphone, HyperX's Quadcast S, which is an RGB USB condenser, is 25% off right now, down to 120. In case you want a one terabyte SSD, so Brent's got theirs for only $85. And if you need a gamer Wi-Fi router for whatever reason, the Asus ROG Rapture Wi-Fi is down 31% on the day. But let's see what crypto stonks are up or down on. Bitcoin, woo, just uh, peaking up a little bit. Up 1% on the day to be at 38,673. Ethereum up 2.6% to be at 25.74 and Dogecoin up 0.3% to be at 11.8 cents. But Google's up with a lot of the cash and throwing it at new companies, including Mandian, who is a cybersecurity company that Google wants to bring into their fold. They look like they want to take security seriously. This is something that other tech giants have been prioritizing as of late, namely Microsoft purchasing other security companies. But Mandian, in case you haven't heard of them, is the company that other big companies go to when they get hacked, like with the SolarWinds hacked or Equifax or T-Mobile looking to enter into a partnership after they get breached. Mandiant seems to be a big name in Google trying to prioritize all of that. But Xbox can't be prioritized in Japan. New reports coming out on how many Xbox consoles have sold in Japan. And it's only 2.3 million in the last 20 years. That is just an astonishingly small number. And if you want to see the breakdown based on which Xbox it is, Xbox 360 has the nicest amount at 69%. Everything else hasn't really sold. 20% of those sales is the original Xbox. The Xbox One only got 5%, and then the current Series S and X only account for 6% of those sales. Japan having a stranglehold on the console market with Sony and that other company, Microsoft really not breaking into that market market whatsoever, but AMD looking to break into the hyper prosumer market with Threadripper 5000. 
It's real. It's here, my friends, based on the Zen 3 design AMD announced this yesterday. It's got things like 128 PCI Express lanes of PCI Express 4.0, up to 64 cores. It's more efficient than ever, up to 67% lower power per core, up to 39% faster rendering, 64 cores, 128 threads, up to 4.5 gigahertz. L3 cache that's going to be a little bit better, and the Zen 3 architecture with all of these good details that you see right here. Are you excited for Threadripper 5000? Let me know down below in the comments, and I'm going to let you know that Linux is scary, baby, especially with its dirty pipe. Linux got too many dirty pipes, okay? It's got vulnerabilities out to wazoo right now. This is actually a really serious security vulnerability, according to the reports that are out there, because it makes it easy for untrusted users to execute code capable of doing a whole host of naughty, naughty things on your Linux, potentially even typing in rm-rf forward slash star, which as we all know, Brett's not smart enough to know that it does something else, but this is being called dirty pipe because it's kind of adjacent to dirty cow, which was a vulnerability that was discovered in 2016. And these are just great names, by the way, but dirty pipe means that the pipeline might actually be compromised and people are finding out that it does a whole host of different things like uh, unauthorized creation of SSH keys or uh, hijacks an SUID binary to create a root shell, which I mean, sounds scary if I knew anything about Linux, but according to all of the reports I'm reading, this is a big problem. And maybe, uh, maybe you should consider switching to running everything inside of a computer inside of Minecraft that runs its own custom operating system there, okay? You can't trust anything else anymore. That's just, you gotta play Club Penguin inside your Minecraft computer. Otherwise, you're just, you're gonna be vulnerable to all sorts of elements out there. Anyways, I'm vulnerable to continue with this episode more, but I'm not gonna, because this episode's over. I'll see you tomorrow for more tech news here on the interwebs.